So yeah, while Mac OS 26 is still downloading in the background and Xcode 26 is crawling its way through that progress bar, classic, I figured we'd hang out a bit and just dive into what's actually new in Xcode 26. I'm on the Apple developer website right now, you know, that fancy black landing page with all the glowing icons, very dub dub vibes, feels clean, modern, a little too excited about rounded corners, but I'm into it. I thought instead of just reading it alone, I'd take you through the page while I click around, kind of like a chill walkthrough with my own thoughts as a solo dev who's actually going to use this stuff day to day. So yeah, this isn't just what Apple says. It's how I'm thinking about using it. All right, first thing on the page, find and fix bugs, e uh, terminal icon, classic debugging stuff. So Apple says debugging Swift concurrency uh, just got a lot better. Mm, yeah, this was very needed. If you've worked with async code, you know how fast it turns into spaghetti. Like you're stepping through functions and suddenly it's like, where even am I? Now Xcode shows task IDs, follows async calls properly, and maps out concurrency in a way that's finally understandable. I love that. Um, makes bug hunting feel a little less like detective work and a little more like actual debugging. Back in Xcode 13, debugging async Swift UI views was like walking through fog. Now, I can actually see what's firing and when. Also, this one's subtle but huge. Xcode now flags missing usage descriptions. So if you forgot to explain why you're asking for camera access or location, Xcode catches it before it crashes your app and just gives you a button to fix it. Like, hey friend, you missed a thing. I appreciate that. From my solo dev view, it's like having a second pair of eyes watching out for those silly mistakes that would otherwise make it to test flight and bite me later. This is the kind of polish I really appreciate. And yeah, I'm definitely feeding this into Claude. Curious how it interprets concurrency traces and how cursor can help me refactor async blocks now that they're actually trackable. And that's the thing. Uh, these tools aren't just about performance. They're about confidence. When you're building solo, you don't have QA. You don't have another set of eyes. Tools like this, uh, they are your team. Next up, get real-time insights. Oof, this is the instrument section, the hardcore performance stuff. I used to be intimidated by this, not going to lie. But Xcode 26? It's actually kind of inviting. They've updated processor trace to work with the new M4 chips and iPhone 16. It tracks every low level CPU branch decision. So like you can literally see how your code is executed at the micro level. Is that overkill for most indie projects? Maybe, but if you're trying to make your app buttery smooth or avoid random performance issues on older devices, this matters. Also shout out to the CPU counters update. You now get presets to analyze how your code uses the CPU. That means real insights without needing to be a hardware engineer. It's kind of like instruments went from being a power tool you never touch to a smart assistant that shows you what matters. And yeah, I'm definitely curious how GPT interprets this instrument's data. Like, can I copy out traces and ask Claude to help me spot patterns? That's where I think this starts unlocking workflows we haven't even tried yet. Oh, and the power profiler is getting a big glow up. You can now visualize how your app affects battery life across different system components. As someone who cares about UX, this is big. It's not just about performance anymore. It's about empathy for the end user. Swift UI also gets love here. You can finally track which view updates are happening and why. No more guessing which modifier triggered a redraw. Honestly, this should have been here years ago, but I'm happy it's here now. Like last month, I was chasing a weird scroll bug on iPad. The new instruments um, view tracking would have saved me hours there. 
and zooming out this kind of insight, it's rare to get this level of visual feedback as a solo dev. Normally you're just guessing based on logs. Now you've got actual clarity. Moving to measure, update, observe. This one's all about testing and, um, okay, UI testing. Uh, not always the sexiest topic, but Xcode 26 makes it surprisingly cool. You can now record yourself tapping through the app in the simulator, and it just writes the UI test code for you, and it's clean. Not the weird auto-generated soup we used to get, like this is actually readable. Also, test reports now include video recordings and element inspection tools, so if something breaks, you don't just get a red, you get a video of what went wrong and where. For a solo dev without a QA team, that's gold. And the responsiveness checks, yeah, those are built in now too. It flags UI hitches and warns about things that might slow down your app. It even does runtime API checks to make sure you're not using something you shouldn't on older OS versions. It's like having a quality assistant built right into the test suite and you bet I'll be pasting those logs into cursor to help improve test coverage. Curious how far we can push it, like, can it write better assertions if I give it the trace? And again, back in Xcode 12 or 13, this stuff was either brittle or non-existent, so seeing it now, it's like we're finally catching up to what modern testing should feel like, zooming out again. Testing used to feel like a luxury. Now it feels like table stakes and Apple's making it more doable for teams of one. All right, next one, supercharge your development workflow. Uh, this is the build system and Xcode cloud section. Okay, so Apple made explicitly built modules the default now. It just means builds are more stable. If you've ever had those weird module errors that only happen in release mode, yeah, this should reduce that. And Swift Build is now integrated into Swift Package Manager. That's one of those long-term plays that um, helps the community, helps cross-platform tooling, and just kind of makes Swift Dev feel more modern. But what really got me here, the Organizer tab, it now shows trending issues across your app builds. Like if crash rates are slowly climbing or uh, disk rights are going up, it flags it. Imagine knowing that before your users leave a bad App Store review, I'm here for it. Oh, and they're adding the same enhanced security stuff they use in Apple's own apps. It's opt-in, but yeah, if you're handling sensitive data, it's a solid peace of mind feature. Last year, I had this crash spike post-launch that I only discovered through user complaints. This year, maybe I'll catch it right in Organizer. That would be a game changer. Also wondering if I can plug some of this build insight into GPT workflows, like let it auto parse the trend charts or generate summaries of build stability. That's where I'm heading next. And stepping back, this is one of those features that makes you feel like you're not building alone. The system's watching, nudging, advising, that's big. Scrolling past the boxes now. Um, this is where Apple wraps up their pitch. So while Mac OS 26 is still creeping through the installer and Xcode 26 is slowly unpacking itself, I'm already kind of impressed. It's not a flashy update. There's no one more thing, but it's one of those versions that feels thoughtful. You've got speed boosts, quality of life stuff, smarter tools, and more control. It's like Apple finally leaned into the fact that devs are juggling AI tools, complex projects, and real deadlines, and they're trying to smooth the ride. And from my solo dev perspective, this is exactly what I want. No gimmicks, just less friction between idea and execution. I'll be testing it all out over the next few days, dropping it into my current project, seeing what breaks, what delights, what just quietly saves me time without ever bragging about it. If you're curious how it holds up in the real world, stick around, I'll share that too. And, and hey, let me know in the comments, what's the most exciting part of Xcode 26 for you? Anything I should explore deeper? 
All right, installs are nearly done. I'm Daniel. This is Solo Swift Crafter. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Peace.